What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Tribe of Millionaires podcast from GoBundance. I'm your host, Jamie Gruber. And today I welcomed in Justin Skinner, who was an investor, former uh, graphic design guy out of the Midwest, out of Springfield, Missouri. Uh, and we had a great discussion about you know, kind of where he's come from to where he is, which included being fired at one point from his job. He's been in the short-term rental market. He's developing property, build for rental property now. And we talked a lot about all of those things, but we also got into you know, uh, what he's doing in his personal life around his family, his wife, and, and how they've bonded over things like coaching and couples therapy and that sort of thing. We got really deep on some great topics. And I shared as well, I think the power of investing in the relationship as much as we do our own health. So great episode. We went a lot deeper than I, I wasn't sure where we would go at certain points, but we went a lot deeper than I thought we might uh, on a lot of different topics. So this is very wide ranging, a lot of great info. would love to hear what you think about it. Be sure to smash that subscribe button, like this video and drop a comment about what you took away, what resonated with you from my friend, Justin Skinner. Justin, welcome to the podcast. Hey, thanks for having me. Of course, man. Of course. Glad to have you. So let's start with your backstory, like proud Midwestern boy. So I assume that means you are from and still live somewhere in the Midwest, but give us the beginnings through now in, you know, five, six, seven minutes. Yeah. Um, so I grew up here in the Midwest. So I'm in Missouri, um, Springfield, Missouri, to be exact. Grew up, both my grandparents were farmers. Uh, so I kind of grew up on a dairy farm. Both of them were dairy farmers. Uh, grew up across the street from the farm. So I had plenty of room to go out and uh make a mess of things and mess up and and kind of just roam honestly my mom and um which i know i feel like we can't do this anymore but my mom growing up would be like hey uh you know we'll see you at dinner and we'd leave for eight hours and go explore the farm and do whatever and you know get in trouble with cows and all that and uh so i think that that definitely helped us grow and kind of helped us get an idea of of maybe who we were or you know what we wanted to explore so we did that. And then, um, yeah, wound up being on the farm and then playing sports growing up. So, uh, played baseball, wound up playing baseball in college and then, um, didn't really honestly get into investing until, uh, later on actually got a degree uh, in college with graphic design, uh, kind of just didn't trying to figure out what, what I want to do. I didn't know what I wanted to do and design sounded fun. It sounded fun to build some, some skill, so did that and then wound up working a couple of places and then wound up working on her own um, through, you know, one thing led to another and wound up getting fired from a job and my wife and I started our own studio. So uh, that was kind of the, the kick in the pants that we needed. Um, so we did that and then um, with the studio kept going, growing and growing and, you know, we had profits and started trying to figure out what to do with those and made some dumb mistakes early on and learned how not to invest profits. And then, uh, kind of got into real estate, bought the studio we were in and then fell in love with real estate and kept investing and, uh, kind of learned how to handle money a little bit better. And, and hopefully it, you know, keeps, keeps going in the right direction. What was the, you said, uh, uh, learn how not to invest money in the beginning. What were the mistakes? If you don't mind sharing a couple of, them? yeah. Um, one of the bigger, I mean, uh, stupid stuff like stock stuff, you know, so I, I take, you know, um, some, you know, a couple thousand dollars I'd invest in some stock that someone told me about like, Hey, this is going to triple in the next month. And then, you know, I watched one stock that I invested in go from, um, uh, basically lost 99% of value in like a month. Um, so I realized at that point, I pro I, I don't love casinos. I don't want to gamble. Um, and, and even though, you know, when something sounds too good to be true, usually it is. Uh, and I kind of just learned how to be slow and steady and, um, met with a, a couple really great people. And they just said, Hey, just, uh, they knew I was a baseball guy and I said, Hey, singles and doubles all day long, just hit singles and doubles. Don't worry about home runs. And that kind of switched my mindset of, you know, I'm not looking for the overnight doubling my money. Um, and maybe later on when you get, you know, cash flow and money coming in, you can take some of those chances. But, uh, early on, I took some of those dumb chances. Uh, another one would be, uh, we, we try to do two apps and I learned very quickly that you can't just create a cool looking app and throw it out there and expect people to find it. So I think we lost, I mean, we wound up losing like, I don't know, 18, $20,000 on two apps, which, you know, could have been worse. Um, but you put it out there, you expect it to take off. It doesn't. And then you realize all the marketing that goes into it. Um, and you know, all the production and constantly updating the app. So we kind of punted on those, but those are some little lessons early on. And then we, we bought real estate and we 
you know, saw the appreciation, we saw the cash flow, and I thought this is this is definitely a way to to invest going forward. And even though it might not be the profits might not be as sexy as doubling your money in two weeks. Um, I think for our lifestyle and kind of my mindset, that slow and steady growth is what we what we're attracted to and what we're what we're gonna go going forward. Gotcha. What what you say singles and doubles real estate, it sounds like is that single and double. What is the real estate you're investing in? Are you flipping single family yeah. homes? What, what, what are you doing? Yeah, so we never really got into flipping. I think for some reason I read a couple of books early on that talked about, you know, in, in 08, 09, that that real estate crash, how the people that got hurt were the flippers and the people that held long term through that came through it fine. So we yeah. kind of always invested for cash flow. Um, wasn't really interested in flipping. And, you know, if someone came along and I always said, if even now, if someone came along and they offered us a, a walkaway price, we'd sell, but our plan is to hold things long-term. So for us, we run uh, short-term rentals. So we've got some single family stuff. Um, we're building some single family homes, but for the most part, we run Airbnb properties. That's how we got started. And um, we've kind of shifted into like the 30 plus day model, like almost like a um, I don't know, like a hybrid model of Airbnb where we're renting to business travelers, nurses that come in and stay anywhere from, you know, four to 12 weeks, um, something like that. And so we give them a place to stay for. Where is, is this right where you are? Springfield, Missouri area, or are this you is in Springfield. This is all in Springfield. So, uh, our two biggest employers here in Springfield are, uh, Cox hospital, mercy hospital. So they employ a lot of traveling nurses. Makes sense. Uh, so the demands there, and then, yeah, sometimes we just have business travelers or people in between homes. Um, we have quite a few people moving here. Um, so, you know, people that come here, they can't find a house and they just need a place to live for, you know, five, six months. Uh, we just have fully furnished houses. They come in, uh, it's, it's almost turnkey for them. So what's the uh, draw to Springfield? Just, yeah. I'm curious. I know like Nigel, like from you yeah. know, on, a, on a whim, it feels like he just woke up one day and it's on yeah. another podcast episode. You guys can go back and listen to, but yeah, Oregon to Springfield, just like that. But what is the draw of Springfield? Yeah. I mean, I think Springfield has, you know, Midwestern values. We're in the middle of the country. I think we're easy to get to, honestly. I mean, anywhere in the country, we're, we're almost smack dab in the middle. And yeah. actually funny enough, where my dad grew up in Hartville, Missouri was actually, I think two weeks ago, they announced it is like the literal population center of America. Hmm. Um, so we are almost in the center of America. So it's easy to get to things. Uh, I mean, we've got Johnny Morris here. I don't know if you're familiar with Bass, Bass Pro Shops. Oh, uh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So he's, uh, I mean, he started here and he's poured a lot of money, done a lot of really cool things in this area. He's got Wonders of Wildlife Museum. That's like number one rated museum. He's got, he's built like five golf courses, just did one with Tiger Woods. So he's built a, a lot of attractions. And then we've got Table Rock Lake in Branson. Um, so I think it's a great place for families to meet up. It's a great place for, you know, um, I guess every year having something to come back to, something to look forward to, and almost a tradition. Yeah. Uh, we've got Silver Dollar State. We've got a lot in the Midwest, maybe that people kind of look over, and, you know, they, they just look at us, us as flyover states, which is, which is fine. But um, I think we definitely have a lot to offer here. Coastal elites, damn it. I'm from the coast. Originally. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I guess I'm one of those people. Um, you, you talked about building. Are you building Airbnb property? Is that what your development is? Um, like building no, to rent as Airbnb, I mean, or long-term? Yeah, yeah. So, well, currently we're not building for Airbnb. We've got like a single family home. Um, we'll actually have these managed by someone else. These won't be Airbnb units. These will just be single family new homes to rent. Um, again, we kind of, we, I know there's a lot of older houses out there, but we like the lower maintenance of newer homes. Yeah, of course. Um, so we just like the build to rent model. So we're going to build four of those. If those go well, we'll just keep doing, you know, as many as we can every year. And then eventually we'd love to build some, some really unique Airbnb getaways or, you know, something within an hour drive where, you know, maybe it's in the middle of the woods and it overlooks a, a valley or a hill. And, um, you know, it's just kind of a, maybe a writer's retreat or some little getaway for a couple or a small group. Um, I think that's in the plans. We don't have anything going right now though. This built for rental market is, is uh, I mean, maybe it's more common than I realized, but I was researching this a bit. It's sort of like you have the SFR market, if you will, like buy uh, uh, developers built to sell, right? To, to yeah. sell to people that are buying. But yeah. building, you know, tracts of land or developing tracts of land for rental, uh, mm -hmm. I, think, I think the big guys, the Blackstones or whatever, are just now starting to look at that as, yeah. uh, as a place. So it's still a fairly untouched market with a lot of upside. Yeah. Is that kind of what, is that why you got into it? Like, why did you start? I mean, you mentioned, you know, 
Yeah. Uh, the newer homes, there's less maintenance. I get that. But construction yeah. costs, I got to believe, are a little higher than acquiring an existing single family home to rent. Are the rent? Yeah. Is the rent difference that much better? Like, you just talk a little bit about that, if you don't mind. It's it's evening now. Um, I know like rents are coming up in this area. They've, they've bumped up quite a bit in the last couple of years. Um, so that's evening now. But as far as like per square foot, um, we do. I've got a friend who put this development together and they've got several homes. So um, it's nice because I can trust them and then we can kind of get in and do that. But as far as like the per rent, maybe we're not getting the 1% rule or anything like that. But I think the appreciation, what we can build these for, um, that's the upside. So um, we will still cash flow them. But at the same time, we do like providing just a good place for someone to live. We don't we don't want to be a slumlord and we don't want to own properties that we may make a 2% return on, but it's falling apart and, you know, the, the roof is leaking and it's just, we just, we don't want to own that kind of property. So we'd rather have new properties, have places that, you know, maybe people are renting, but they're still proud to rent. They still love the area. It's still a nice house. That's kind of our, maybe our mindset going into those. That's you're uh, you mentioned that you were fired uh, from a, yeah. I think a graphic design job, correct? Yeah. Yeah. When was that and why? That was, um, and when was that? That was 2000, 2012. Okay. Um, and it was one of those things. It's like, I won't get into it too much because I don't want to, you know, bash the guy that did it. <laughs> um, but I think it was one of those things where it was just, uh, it was, it was in, um, it was about an hour and a half away. So I worked remotely. And I think I was just kind of disconnected from the company. Um, I go to there once a week and it just got to the point where maybe the relationship didn't make sense for both of us. Um, and then, you know, he took the initiative to, to kind of fire me. And I think technically on paper, he had me resign, which is fine. I don't really care what it's called, but forcefully I left. Um, but all that to say it, it's led to where we are now. So I'm super thankful for it. What was the, what was life like at that point? There were married kids at that point where you're a single guy, like, yeah. yeah, we're, I was married. So we'd been married for about four and a half, five years, something like that. And uh, I actually remember it because my wife still, you know, kind of uh, laughs about it. But uh, it was, I think I got the call like 8 30 in the morning. I was in my home office and he just said, you know, Justin, I don't, I don't think it's going to work out anymore. You know, we're, we need to part ways. And uh, so we got off the phone call and I kind of sat there for 20 minutes and was like, well, what I'm going to do? Even backstory before that, my wife had just left her job before that, like a month ago. Um, or a month before that, because uh, we got to the point we were doing stock photography at that point. And we said, Hey, if you're, if we ever get to the point where stock income is the same as what you're making, she was working at a coffee shop. Then uh, if it's ever at the same level, just quit your job and we'll do this full time. Um, so she did. So we went from two incomes uh, to one to zero in four weeks, basically. Um, and there was definitely, there was definitely some pressure, but it was almost like exciting pressure. It was kind of motivating pressure. Um, so yeah, we, we got off that phone call and about nine o'clock, I, you know, called her and I was like, Hey, just got fired. And she's like, Oh, I'm so sorry. And I said, that's okay. Let's go look for a spot. So we drove around and we found a spot that day to kind of get into. And it was a rough spot. It was, it was, uh, downtown Springfield. And, uh, it was an old place called commercial street, old street growing up. We weren't allowed to go there. It was just kind of rough. Um, but, uh, over the last 10 years, it's really turned a corner. So anyway, we, we got into a building, we fixed it up and came to an agreement with the landlord and then wound up buying that building, I don't know, three or four years later. This was for the photography business. That's what you were yeah. looking for a spot for. Yeah, exactly. So we found a perfect spot. It was like 2,200 square feet, um, big, high, like 13, 14 foot ceilings. Um, and we, we got really, uh, honestly, we signed a two year lease and the first year was like $500 a month. The second year was 750 and it was wow. Uh, we just repainted everything. We fixed some things up. Um, it was part, it was great. So was the photography business at a point where it could sustain that, or did you have significant savings? Like how did you float that, that time in between? No. You know, your... Yeah. That's, that's an interesting part is we were actually, we were, I would say we were close to in the red at that time. It wasn't like mm -hmm. we didn't, we didn't have a, a ton of savings and, uh, to be completely honest about three months in, um, two huge things happened for us. We were, you know, we were kind of going out, we we're trying to get design work and photo work and we were kind of just barely scraping by. And, and honestly, we were doing a lot of praying and, um, we had, uh, we came across a Christian stock photography state or site called Lightstock out of Texas and, uh, became quick friends with the owners there and, uh, wound up being like one of their founding photographers. So we shot a ton of stock photography for them that catapulted us where that was starting to take care of our bills. And then at the same time, around the same time, 
uh, we had a big not-for-profit convoy of hope here in Springfield um, that was started in a side initiative. And they were, they were within walking distance to our studio and the head guy of the program just walked in one day and was like, Hey, I need some help. Um, and I think I had been trying to get a hold of him for months, um, with, you know, to no avail. And he just walked in and kind of hired us on the spot. And, uh, that helped us, that really helped us, you know, create a foundation. And I think that catapulted us into, you know, the success we, we had. So yeah, like you said, you're grateful for what happened that you yeah. were let go or forced resigned or whatever, because it, it put you where you are today. If that hadn't happened, I know it's a decade ago at this point, but yeah. if that hadn't happened, would you still be, do you think employed? Like I, I'm kind of curious, were you on a path to like, I don't want to yeah. do this long-term anyway. You know, where would you be right now? I think we're on a path. Uh, we were definitely on a path to, to do our own thing. I don't know what the timeline looks like, or, you know, it's one of those things where sometimes it's just, you, you know, your, your parents or someone needs to push you out of the nest um and i think that was just our moment so maybe it would happen five years uh from that point but then again looking back timing wise we wouldn't have found that building we wouldn't have got in that building i mean just the timing everything looking back was perfect um so to answer your question yes i think we we're on a path i think it would look really different uh than than what it does today but we were on a path to do it i think um yeah like i said timing wise it was just it couldn't have been more perfect Love it. No, your your uh your your faith, I'm sure, in this in this respect also, you know, plays into it. The fact that yeah. you, you know, you feel rooted and strong in the fact that I can survive, I will survive, and that everything yeah. happened, everything happened when it was supposed to. Fair? For sure. Yeah. Yep. Um, your brother Levi, he's part of uh the Ascend group and a great, great guy. Um, yeah. you mentioned about, you know, getting in trouble. I, I don't know if you were cow tipping or whatever the hell you were doing in yeah. the Midwest. I, you know, I, I don't know, but, uh, talk about the relationship you guys have. Cause it sounds like there's a pretty strong bond there. And, you yeah. know, do you work together? Like what's the family relationship, business relationship you have with Levi? Yeah. Yeah. So we get to work together uh, growing up. We were eight years apart. So he's eight years younger. Uh, I was always in sports, so we had a relationship, but it was never, you know, working or a relationship where we could go out and we could pick up, you know, some sport and go play together because uh, the gap was pretty big. Once he hit yep. 15, he actually passed me in height and like strength and all. I mean, he just like shot up like a weed. So he's like six, four now. He's got me like six inches. So he's massive. So I don't mess with him. Um, but long story short, um, yeah, we get to work together uh, and we see each other almost every day. We share an office. So um, it's great. I mean, he's, he's doing amazing. And I, I think he actually used to be a former CPA. That's what he got his college degree in. Uh, and then I wound up talking him out of that and coming to join me in real estate. So, uh, he took a leap of faith to do that. And it's been, it's been great. And I think he's, he's got, uh, I, I think he's going to be a hundred times more successful than I am. Um, he's got work ethic and smarts and, uh, I mean, he's, he's still young. So I think sometimes he wants to get ahead of himself and I keep telling him like, Hey, slow down. Like you don't have to do everything, you know, right now. So I think he's going to do really well, but it's really fun to see kind of him blossom and, and enjoy self-employment and, you know, uh, all the things that come along with it. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Good for you, man. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. He's a, he's a great dude. I got to know him a little bit over the, over the yeah. last six, eight months or whatever it's been since he yeah. joined. So he is a good, good one. Good stuff. Uh, you're writing a book, Professional Failure, that's going to be coming out next year. What's the basis of this? Like, why why write a book? Kind of give me the story on that. Yeah, so the backstory was, I think I was just maybe thinking through, you know, all the mentors I had growing up, all, you know, where I learned what I did. Um, and so I kind of just started writing. I don't know that I planned on writing a book. Maybe I did, but I kind of just started journaling, writing, and then it kind of just formed. And I got, you know, with GoBundance, um, I got in a writer's group and it kind of, it, it definitely motivated me to just keep writing, keep doing it. Um, but the book's concept, it's called professional failure. The book's concept is basically, you know, learning from failures and not only your own failures, but from the failures of people around you. So whether it be through books or podcasts or, you know, people in your life, I think um, the power of having mentors and then just honestly, the, the humility of like acknowledging how your mentors have helped you along the way. Um, I think that's really important. So the more I wrote on it, the more I'm like, oh yeah, this, this makes sense. I should, I should add on to this or keep going with this. Um, and it's been really fun because it's just, it's really fun to look back and think back, you know, starting with my parents, starting with my grandparents, um, all the influences I've had in my life that have poured into me um, and, you know, made me who I am today. 
Very cool. The the let's talk about the process for a moment because we were talking a bit before yeah. we started recording um, about your writing it. You know, writing it is one thing, finishing it is another. Okay, can you? I mean, for a lot of people who are aspiring authors, what are what are the what are the steps that you had to take? So, did you hire somebody? Did you hire a branding person, a, a, a copywriter, a a, a ghostwriter, anything like that, or did you just pull up a Word doc and start writing? Kind of get, get let's get granular on the process of writing a yeah. book as you've been doing it. Yeah. So actually I was listening to bigger pockets, um, and Brandon Turner, uh, and David, obviously who are in go Um, they talked about, I think Brandon was talking about his process and how to do it. And I think he went through like this brain dump and he kind of explained how he did it. And he said, you know, here's like a hundred different, I write out a hundred different ideas or chapter ideas. And I just write on each one of or individually. And, and that's what I did. I, I just wrote down maybe concepts around the, the book, uh, theme, and then I just started writing. So I just write, you know, maybe two or three paragraphs. And then I just kept adding and adding. And uh, the writing process is interesting because there are days where I'm like, man, that's, that's really good. And other days where I'm like, I just wasted an hour of my life writing nothing. Um, so I, that's fun. I think it's fun just getting out there. And on a, it honestly kind of hones in what you believe. You think through what you believe uh, more. And I think it's, again, given me more humility and gratefulness to, to kind of see the people that have again, poured into me. So, um, I think writing a book is hard and I mentioned earlier, but writing a book is hard, but finishing a book is even harder. It's cause you get to the point I've had a, an editor. So I didn't hire a ghostwriter. I wrote, you know, everything myself. I had an editor, uh, here locally. She was great. She kind of went through and, um, made sure I wasn't saying anything too dumb or, you know, that didn't sound, you know, I guess, uh, in line with, with the way it should be. Yeah. Um, but anyway, she was great. She helped. And then, um, I'm going through now just trying to go through add, take away, make sure things make sense and just order everything. So, um, still have a little bit to go, but at least I have like the bulk, I think we've got 36, 37, 7,000 words right now. So I've got the bulk of it done. Um, but I just need to finish, which that's the key is finishing. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. What's the, what's the vision of, of the, so the book releases in, I don't know, February, March of 2022, yeah. whatever it's going to release. Yeah. What then? I mean, obviously you're going to, you're going to market it, podcasts, all of that stuff. But what, what are your, what do you hope to, is there a, is there an end goal with this? Or is it yeah. like, I just wanted to write a book, which is yeah. also great. But yeah. Yeah. I think, I think just the challenge of writing a book was fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would say the end goal is honestly just open doors. Um, I think I kind of touched that, uh, touch on that in the book is just to have, um, maybe some avenue to open other opportunities. I don't know what it's going to look like. I'm not planning on making a million dollars from the sale of this book. Um, I think just the process is almost, um, uh, a gradual, um, honing of what I am and who I am. So I think it's just a process and, and I know go abundance talks about it. We just, we're, we want to get better. We want to hone our skills. Um, but then beyond that, uh, possibly doing a podcast and then, you know, possibly speaking. And I've talked to my wife about it. It'd be really fun to, to go places, either speak with her and have her travel with me and, you know, do things together. We've been doing things together, you know, business-wise for the last 10 years. So, uh, whatever we do, we want to do together going forward, which is, which is fun to think about. That is cool. I love that. Yeah. I love that. What is your, what, what would you define as, you know, to, to have the success you've had, what's your superpower or your gift or whatever? What is it that you give the world that uh, that's unique to you? Hmm. Um, that's a good question. I would, I would say maybe just the ability to shut up sometimes. Um, I, I, think I need to learn that. I need to yeah, learn that. Yeah. 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 I don't, I don't have that. I, I think, I think there's a lot of people. Um, and even there was a conversation last night, uh, someone was talking and, uh, you know, he, he worked at a, a fast food place and he was very pleasant, but he was talking about how he owned, you know, an Airbnb and telling us all about Airbnb and, and never once I, I never said I owned one. I, he never asked. So I just didn't say anything, but even in those little moments, I think just, just being quiet and, and listening, you know, kind of to someone else, I think there's, there's moments that we can learn from anyone. Like, honestly, even if it's, uh, uh, you know, someone on the side of the street uh, or it's, you know, your parents, even if you know something, I think just the ability to be quiet uh, allows me to learn from, from people that maybe I never would have even thought about learning from, to be honest. That's awesome. but, um, so that's what, yeah, I would say maybe that's my, my superpower is just, just shutting up. I love that. I had a doctor's appointment this morning, just standard kind of physical, annual physical kind of thing. And 
uh, the lady there said, Oh, no work today. I said, well, I'm, I'm kind of self-employed. You know, well, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm in real estate investing. She's like, Oh, and she started talking and didn't say anything, but it ended that she owns like three or four Airbnbs in Florida and her son-in-law yeah. owns like 30. And I, like, yeah. to your point, I never shut up. I did shut up in that moment. And you know, <laughs> lo and behold, to your point, some interesting information. I almost wanted to like, Hey, give your son-in-law my number. I'd love to chit chat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's a great superpower, man. I love that. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Go abundance. So you've been a member for what about a year now? I believe correct? about a year. Yeah, yeah. How, what what's been? What has it been for you? Why did you join? And what's go abundance been for you, if anything? Yeah. So Nigel Geisinger is the one that got me involved. He's the one that kind of introduced me. Um, I had I had heard about it, you know, offhand through through podcasts, through Bigger Pockets podcast. But Nigel really introduced me about it. Um, and then honestly, once I got in, I, I never really hesitated. I just said, Hey, I'm gonna. This sounds great. This is right, right in my alley. I want to do this. What's going on, everybody? It's Jamie. I'm jumping in real quick here because some people are listening to this podcast thinking, man, I hear this guest. I hear what they're talking about. This whole go abundance thing sounds pretty cool. I'd love to be a part of that. And I would say to you, if you are qualified to be part of go abundance, you're a millionaire or accredited at the very least, jump on to goabundance.com and just put your application in. You'll get on a call. It might even be with me where we can talk about what you're trying to do, what you're trying to accomplish and what it is to be part of this community in depth. Would love to have a conversation with you about that. It's been just so life-changing for me. And for those of you out there that are saying, yeah, sounds great. I would if I were a millionaire or if I were accredited, but I'm not there yet. We've got that now. We've built a program and I run it. I love, love being a part of it. I left my job for it called Emerge and Ascend. Emerge is where you got to start. It's a 12-week intensive sprint goal-setting course. You're going to get curriculum every week. You're going to get live intervention every week. You're going to get connection with GoBundance members every week. You're going to get accountability from like-minded people every week. Jump into that, kill it, and we invite you to Ascend, which is essentially the GoBundance Mastermind without the million-dollar requirement. And we actually even add in coaching to help folks find their purpose, their mission, their values. It's intense. It's, it's everything all wrapped in one. So again, if you're a millionaire or you're at least accredited and you're wondering about this GoBundance thing and that should I, shouldn't I, just apply. Throw your name in. You lose nothing. All you do is put your name into an application form. You get on a phone call and then you decide. If you're not yet at that million dollar mark, look at Emerge. GoBundance.com slash Emerge. And what you can do as well is drop my name in there, Jamie, J-A-M-I-E, and we'll knock 200 bucks off the tuition for Emerge. Jump in there and we'll get you started on your journey toward being a whole life millionaire, toward getting to GoBundance, whatever you want. People in Emerge, people in Ascend, people in GoBundance all report back often the changes it's made in their lives financially, relationally, and everywhere else. So go to GoBundance.com, check all of that out, see wherever you are, dive into that particular area of GoBundance, and we'd love to see you inside of the tribe. Now, back to our show. Um, and then once I got in, I think I realized the amount of wisdom and knowledge in, within the group. And uh, it really is a tribe of people that know a lot of things. And I know there's micro tribes for everything, but um, just the experience over the last year, I know I went to my first event in Steamboat um, and that was fun to, to meet guys, but just the amount of yeah, wisdom and knowledge where you can ask a question in, in the, you know, the Facebook group and you can have really knowledgeable guys answer questions. Uh, it, that's just rare in my mind. It's rare, in, you know, in my opinion, and I don't know a lot of places that, that you have that access to other knowledgeable guys without paying, you know, out the wazoo for it. So, uh, Ryan boat. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was, yeah, I was going to, that that's been probably the biggest positive for me. Yeah, Ryan Bowden spoke to, I don't know if you know Ryan, he's out of Louisiana. He's, I don't think I met him. Huh? Yeah, 1,500 units of multifamily and then sold them all and bought a bunch of retail. Just an absolute, absolute, he's crushing it. But uh, he spoke to Emerge last night. And um, mm -hmm. uh, when asked that question, somebody asked him that question. He said, honestly, like the Facebook group alone is worth yeah. the price of admission. <laughs> and yeah. it's true. Like the, the, the conversations in there, I know one guy, uh, read a post from another guy about some loan program with like a two year deferred payment and yada, yada, yada. Yep. He ended up and he ended up getting approved and he's cash flowing like 30 grand more a year as a result of it. Just like yeah. that. Right. Those I think that was Brian, Brian Beers. Beers posted that's that. right. Yeah. yeah. Cause, uh, cause yeah, I, I, uh, talked with Brian, I don't know, a couple months back, but yeah, he posted that. I did the same thing. I went and I was like, it can't be that easy. And I went and did it. I'm like, Holy cow, it was that easy. <laughs> um, so yeah, things like that. I mean, that, that stuff's gold. And then it, yeah. what it does is it allows me to pass it on to other people too. So I get to, you know, tell my brother Levi about it, or I get to tell 
my aunt and uncle own a business. And I think that that is the power and honestly, velocity of knowledge within the group is that yeah. we can, I can share that with other people, um, you know, and be a value to other people. Yeah. I say that 40, I'm 43, 40 years of my life was a certain way. And it was a slow burn to get to a certain apex, if you will. And then yeah. the last three are just like completely different and accelerate, like condensed down. Like, you yeah. know, it didn't take me another 40 years to do what, what I thought I wanted to do. It took three. Right. And I'm yeah, still growing exactly. toward that, but uh, that's a great word. Velocity. I like that a lot. That's yeah. great. You said you didn't hesitate when you jumped into go bundles. What do you mean by that? What does that mean? Didn't hesitate? Well, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's obviously a money commitment. Um, it's a money sure. commitment. It's a time commitment. And I think I just saw the, the group's potential and I know Nigel talks so highly of it and I respect Nigel a lot. Um, so I think based on his recommendation and then, you know, kind of an overview of the group, I just was like, you know, this, this is, this is an investment of time and money that will return 10, a hundred fold, um, you know, over the course of if I've only been doing it for a year and I feel like my, same with you, my growth has been drastically different than what it was. Um, so I can only imagine being in it two, three, four or five years. I mean, some of these guys that I don't want to say I'm jealous of, but they've been in for a long time. I'm like, man, the amount of, of things that you've seen or, or conversations you've had, they have to be amazing. So yeah, my first year I burned most of it uh, in the in the stand in the mindset of imposter syndrome. Like, holy crap, some what some of these guys are doing. Like, yeah. why am I even here? I shouldn't yeah. be here, you know, kind of thing. Exactly. So I, that's why I asked the question. What do you mean you jumped right in? Because it took me a little while, and it really yeah. was when I got my my potty and I got together in person about month eight or nine, whatever it was uh, of my time in Gabonas. It was just like, okay, we're all human beings. We're all exactly. guys, right? At the at the yep. base level, we're all guys. And to your point these conversations, like I was picking out the ones that were the most, you know, intimidating, like people are talking about buying planes and, you yeah. know, all this stuff. Whereas there's such a diverse range of it. I saw one guy posted yesterday, like a poll, like if water and power were gone for 30 days, did you see this? If water, yeah, I did. Like, Gabe, Gabe posted that. Yeah. Was that Gabe? I, I yeah. chose like, I'm screwed. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm not prepped at all. Right. So just like that conversation is one. And then to your point about loan programs or yeah. discussions on relationships or health or, you know, whatever yeah. it may be, it just, it yeah. is a life changer. So. I think it's great. My coach, actually, my high school coach, who, I mean, I still see him to this day. Um, he, he always told us, uh, you know, if, if it was before a big game or we played, you know, some team that was supposed to be just amazing, he'd always tell us, hey, you wake up in the morning, you, everyone puts their pants on. Like we all put our pants on the same way. And I think it just gave us that, you know, humble mindset of, you know, that, oh, we are the same. And same thing with GoBundance. There are guys that do some amazing stuff. But at the same time, it's, it's not like, you know, they're, they're demigods or, you know, above everyone. It's like they started somewhere they learned. Um, and that's where I'm, I'm perfectly happy being a fly on the wall and be like, Hey, you know, what, what are you guys uh, able to share? What do you want to share? And then, you know, teach me, teach me your ways. Yeah, man. I had a chance to stay at David Osborne's house with my kids, my two kids in, in Austin in May of this year or something like that. Um, a bunch of us were down there for a, kind of a get together while our wives were at the wives event in Asheville. Yeah. And, um, so too many people at Mike McCarthy's house, Osborne's up the road. I, that's where I got to shack up. And so I put the boys down, I go down, I'm talking to him and uh, Christian Mack. I don't know if you know, Christian was there, yeah. you know, these are two guys, nine figure, play, you know, like big, big baller, private yeah. jets, the whole nine. So you list like to your point, that's when I did shut up. I just sat there yeah. and listened to everything. Said. But the, the revelation for me was just how close we were. You know what I mean? Like, they're still trying to be, be the best dads they can be. You know, they're, yeah. they're still talking about things and concepts in their businesses that are similar to what I'm doing in mine, just at, you know, way bigger a scale yeah. at this point. Yeah. They've just taken larger action. They've been in the game maybe a little bit longer. They had their epiphany or breakthrough in, at 26 versus 40, like me kind of, yeah. you know what I mean? So yeah. I'm not saying like that. I mean, they've had success because of what they've done, but the point is to your point, like it's, you feel miles apart, but really from a human level and what they're, you know, we're, we're yeah. five millimeters apart is what exactly. I learned from being around them. So, yeah. And from a human level, I mean, we all struggle with the same things. Yeah. And I think that's the other layer of go abundance is it's not all about business. Like there's a, there's a ton we can learn from family wise, from wife wise. I know, uh, I forget who said it too, but there was a guy in a group, it was some sub post, but he had commented on a post and he said, Hey, you know, all this growth is great, but just remember, you know, who the most important things are in your life. And, and to sum it up, he said, you know, I, I got divorced. I lost my wife because I grew too fast. And it really made me think it's like, I love growth. I love doing that, but I can't leave, you know, 
people behind because, you know, they're not in the same frame of mind or, or, you know, as I am at that point. So um, I think that one really made me stop and think, but again, all that to say, it's not just about money. It's about relationships. It's about things, you know, spiritual, it's about things even like so much more deeper than, than money. So yeah, no, completely agree. And that was the context of most of the conversation we were having with these guys, right? It wasn't about like, you know, yeah. counting, counting dollars or whatever, or, or possessions or material possessions. Yeah. Like I said, there were discussions about, you know, David and I have a kid, I have kids about the same age His youngest kid is my, is my oldest kid's age about the same. And it's the same stuff, like the things that tick yeah. us off and the things that like, ah, I could have done better with that. It's no different. It's just, yeah. the only difference was when I, when I had a glass of water I said, do I put this in the sink? He's like, I don't know, put it down. And <laughs> somebody will do something with it. So. Yeah. That's that's a little bit of a difference. Yeah. That was a little bit of a difference for my household, right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But yeah. uh, but no, that's very cool. I appreciate you sharing that. Well, let's do a quick run through the one sheet real quick. So horizontal yeah. income wise, let's start with that pillar. Uh, yeah. How many lines are you sitting on? And is it is it all short term at this point? Yeah, no. So it's more than short term. So we still get royalties. So we did the stock photography thing for a while. We built that up. We actually still have, I think, about 25,000 assets online that we Ooh. still sell. So we still get uh, quite a bit in royalties every month from that. That helps pay bills. Obviously, that helps us, you know, invest. Um, and then we get um, royalties from another app we're a part of that we help design. And essentially, we sign an agreement. We didn't get paid up front. We would only get paid if it starts, you know, making some money. So it's actually started making some money now. Um, and then so we get some royalties from that. And then yeah, we've got our um, we've got another business that we're a part of that we. We again traded design time for kind of equity in the business that's starting to really roll and pay off. And then the rest is probably real estate. So, um, yeah, Airbnb stuff. And we're trying to go more towards, uh, truly passive. And that's why we're building these, these new houses. Cause the, the more we go, the, we realize we don't want to be stressed out with, you know, just another project. We want to work on things we want, you know, we want our time. So just like right now, we've got family in for Thanksgiving, I can take two or three days off. I can work, you know, for a couple hours in the morning and then we can go play golf or we can go hang out at a coffee shop. I think that's what's most important to, to Kendra, my wife and I, um, is just having that time, that value of time. So I think going forward, we definitely want more passive, um, truly passive, um, opportunities. That makes sense. And I love the, yeah. you kind of have a hold philosophy, a trading uh, uh, time and, and creative effort for equity. I think that's brilliant. Yeah. To your point, now it's starting to pay off. It takes time. It takes time to roll. It does. On the Albert Perez podcast uh, that we did, who's not a GoBundance member, but you know he's a billionaire investor. He owns a bunch yeah. of real estate. He's like, look, good assets double in value every ten to fifteen years, and you're going to take money out of them every five, you know, three to five. So yeah. it, you know, you you can really you know increase if you're not a seller of real estate, if you're a buyer exactly. of real estate, and that's kind of what you're talking about. Exactly. So. Love that. Let's talk about your age defying health bucket. What's current body yeah. weight and body fat percentage at this point? So I'm at 195. My body fat percentage, honestly, I have no idea. Um, <laughs> I would say on that, I could probably lose, I could probably stand to lose 15 pounds. Um, so I think I, in college when I was playing, I was like 180, 185. Um, so if I, if I could get down to that, that'd be great. Um, as far as yeah, I just, I guess I should check my body fat index. I just don't, I have no idea what it is. My wife has a thing, a tool or whatever. So I yeah. used that once before. Yeah. But how about diet and exercise? What does that look like for you? Um, diet. Yeah. So I try to, I, more than anything, I don't really do diets. I just try and do portion control. Yep. Um, so I could be better on that exercise, man. I love, I hate running, like loathe running. And I think I figured out because we were just always punished growing up, like in sports, <laughs> like if you did something wrong, you wouldn't ran until you couldn't run anymore. So, yeah. um, I, I just can't run, but I can chase balls. So if it's hockey, I actually just started playing hockey, which is really funny. My wife is just like dying, laughing, filming me falling everywhere. Um, but started doing hockey. We play tennis. Um, I mean, we play pickleball, basketball. Um, I mean, you name it, we kind of just if there's a ball involved, I'll go play it. Um, so that's how I get my exercise. I try and do that two or three times a week, at least something fairly active. And then I really don't lift weights. I try to do body weight stuff. Um, I did a lot of weightlifting in college when I was playing baseball and I kind of just got out of the rhythm and, uh, you know, weightlifting didn't really just sound, I never really wanted to be bulky. So, um, but yeah, I just do a lot of body weight stuff. So Makes sense. Makes sense. Talk yeah. about the family a little bit. You mentioned Kendra, that's your wife. You've been married. It sounds like what, about 15 years at this point, 13 years. Yeah. 13, 14 years. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Going on 14. And you may have said, other kids, no kids. No. 
Yeah. So we've been married for 13 years. Um, we want kids. We've, we've actually been trying to have kids for like 10 years. So for some reason we've had this struggle with, you know, infertility and, um, it's like one of those things where you just, you don't have control and, um, it's really frustrating, uh, for, for both of us. And we've had, you know, had to learn through some, some different hard times and we're still going through it. Um, still don't know where the finish line is, but we still want kids. So we may, you know, whether that wind up being a, adoption or we wind up having, you know, biologic bids, either way, we, we still want kids. So yeah. they're still in the picture, but right now we're just trying to, you know, enjoy our time and together, which is sometimes, you know, easier said than done. So, yeah. um, but we definitely still want kids. No, I get that. Okay. Yeah. You do take yeah. for granted as a parent sometimes that, you know, uh, uh, not everybody, not everybody has the, the, I don't know, has an easy path, uh, to, to being parents, yeah. if you will. And, um, I know it's gotta yeah. be very trying at times in the relationship. That's gotta be a very emotional thing for especially yeah. her. And then you have to sit there yeah. and watch this and try to support. So I know that could be tough. So I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah. 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 How about yeah. contribution wise? What do you do or how much do you like to give whatever you want to share there? Is there a specific passion yeah. point you have around contribution? Yeah. So, um, yeah. So like I said, so we're both, we're both Christians are very spiritual. So we still, um, we plan on giving 10%, um, you know, to church and things like that. But then above that, um, we really do try and give, you know, whatever we make, we're trying to set aside another 10% to just give, you know, as, as we see fit or, you know, as a need arises, I think that's something we can do together. That's really, uh, unifying. It's really fun to, you know, to see a need and be able to anonymously give. Um, that's what we, that, honestly, that's what we like doing the best is just, you know, giving. And then either, you know, you drop cash or something and, you know, under someone's door or, you know, if someone's struggling, you do that. I think from, it, it, again, it, it puts you in a, a frame of mind that um, we've been blessed with a lot of things. We've been blessed with a lot of amazing people around us that have poured into us. And it's just a little way to give back. So um, beyond that, um I mean, we like serving. We started serving in our church, which we kind of took a four or five year hiatus from doing anything. Um, but we're back in doing that. We're serving at, you know, a cafe at church, which is fun. And it's kind of stress- stressful, to be honest, working in a cafe, but it's really, I don't for some reason, it's really fun. I don't know if it's like therapeutic or what, just making drinks for people, but um, it's, it's kind of fun. So I think it's the ultimate in being present. I remember yeah. working in restaurants like you, there's just no, you don't worry about anything yeah. you know you're not thinking yeah. about anything other than to your point like i'm here right now pouring these exactly. drinks the stress related to my life is because of this moment the fun i'm having is related to this moment like there's yeah. no way to not be present in that role that's what i think it's, yeah no i think that's a good way good way to say it and i haven't i don't know if i really thought about it that way but yeah that's probably why it's therapeutic because it right. is it's all just focused in that moment for an hour and a half, two hours, whatever we're doing it. That's just, that's what we're doing at that moment. Yeah, so back to my restaurant roots there. I like that. Yeah. How about your GoPod? What are you guys talking about right now? Oh man. Um, what are we talking about? So we were supposed to meet today, but I think with Thanksgiving, we're not going to, but um, yeah, I, it, it's funny. Cause I know they talked when we first got in, you know, it's going to take a while to get used to your GoPod. And I think we're all like, all of us are similar in ways, but we're all different in ways. So it makes it really fun. So uh, with that in the beginning, like kind of no one knew how to like, no one knew who to take the lead or, you know, who to, who to push or whatever, but we're at the point now where we can joke with each other. And I mean, they're, they're just, they're great guys. So, um, Have you met in I'd say, or, or no, sorry. Have you met in person yet or no? We have, well, we all met at steamboats. We all oh, went okay. in, um, did that. We were talking about doing a trip next year. Um, I don't know if we're going to do that yet, but yeah, they're all great guys. Um, and again, they're like two from Florida, one from Colorado, one from Iowa, and then, you know, me from Missouri. So we're all over. So we get a different perspective, but I would say biggest thing is, yeah, just motivating. Um, I'm sure you've met Nick Johnson. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So Nick is just like, um, I think his superpower is just like motivating people. So he sends me a text almost every morning saying, Hey, have you, re- have you written anything this morning? I don't know how many people he does that with, but like, he's just like on top of it. And so he's, he's, um, we've got him and he, I think he is like such a motivating and caring person that, I mean, it, it, we, we learn a lot from that. I learn a lot from that, honestly. Um, but beyond that, I mean, it's just, yeah, it's talking through, you know, what we have going on It's talking through, you know, possibly things that are happening in the world, really nothing's off the table. I mean, we've talked through infertility issues and, um, things like that. So really every call is different. Um, and I, they've been trying to get me to do my one sheet for like six months now and they're on me cause I haven't updated it. So don't tell the elders, but yeah, I'll keep it right here. No, it won't <laughs> okay. be public. Nobody will hear it. Nobody will know. Perfect. Anything. Just, Perfect. just between friends. Perfect. Uh, it's funny about the pod. Like I, 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 I 
especially with Ascend. Some of, I think I, I, you have to almost say like, look, every call is not epic, right? Like not yeah. every call is not like, dude, we just came out fire and all sense. Like sometimes to your point, you know, one guy's just dealing with some stuff and you talk yeah. about it or, yeah. you know, it's just a catch up session. Well, my last pod call, we were talking about, I think Hyben posted, Pat Hyben posted about Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos selling off assets. They said they never would. So should yeah. we be keeping money on the sideline? I mean, that's it. We spent an hour just talking about that and yeah. contemplating the market and yada, yada, yada. It wasn't about accountability per se. That's just the way we wanted yeah. to go through it. Um, I think that's important to note is, uh, you know, the, the power of the pod is the connection. Ours has been together three years. So, you know, we, we yeah. were just texting before this, you know, so I like that. Are you going to Park City? I don't think I'm going to Park City. Actually, funny enough, uh, I've only been skiing once in my life and it was on a fake snow hill. <laughs> so I actually got invited to two separate ski trips, like right around the same time Park City is. So I already wow. had already committed to those. So yeah. uh, I'm not going to Park City this time. Um, but yeah, hopefully I can make the next one. Love it. All right. Let's wrap this up with a question from the GoBundance card deck. The question from the six of clubs is, what is something that you resisted initially that ended up being exactly what you needed? Oh man, that's a good question. I would definitely say counseling. Um, hmm. And that's the first thing that popped in my mind, but my wife and I, uh, obviously we have the issues with the infertility stuff, but for a while she had wanted to go to counseling. And I was like, no, that's dumb. I don't want to do that. We can talk through our own stuff. Um, long story short, finally did it. And I think talking through that and um, sitting down with a counselor, it wasn't like we were on the verge of divorce or anything, but um, I think that just helped both of us mentally, physically, it, it helped us like relate in a different way. Um, I think honestly, our stress was like wearing on us physically. Mm -hmm. So I think just talking with a trained, uh, professional through that, um, really was a key factor in working through some of the stuff that we've kind of suppressed. So it wasn't like it was like this, you know, aha moment. Um, it wasn't, you know, like I look forward to doing it every time, but it got to the point where I'm like, Hey, this is, this is really helpful. Um, and yeah, in the beginning I resisted it, never wanted to do it. Um, but now I'm like, Hey, if you're, you know, even if things are good, it's, it's sometimes good to get a third party to, to see things that you're not seeing. So I don't know if that's a great that's, answer, but that's, that's what a great an look. Yeah. I'll, I'll share just kind of in the same space. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I wondered this years ago, I've been married 11 years now. I wondered this years ago um, when I, when a friend of mine was going through a divorce, 25 years married, going through a divorce. And yeah. he was talking about doing therapy then and unpacking back 20 years to something really small that happened. And they never resolved. And it just sort of layered on and layered on. And now yeah. too late, they hate each other, right? Like that was yeah. kind of his story. Uh, but you today I, I got a physical, right? I do that uh -huh. before I'm sick, right? We go to the yeah. dentist every six months before our teeth fall out. Yeah. For some reason with the relationship, and it's probably just what the stigma of therapy to your point is, it's like, yeah. oh, problem. Therapy equals problem. But mm -hmm. to not be proactive with that seems irresponsible. We were doing yeah. that. My wife and I were doing that right up to the beginning of COVID. We were doing like what mm -hmm. we called couples coaching. Just yeah. like, what are we not seeing? Like Michael Jordan has somebody watching his elbow, right? Like when he's taking yeah. a shot, you know, like even the greats have, have coaches watching and helping and seeing things from the other side. And we did that and it was good. And we would, you know, air out some things like, oh, okay, that's interesting. I didn't realize I, whatever. Got away from it when we started up again more recently. And yeah, it was funny to your point where we've gotten out of bounds, where I didn't realize things that I was doing that was creating stress or that she was doing that was creating yeah. stress. It's powerful, man. I, I, I applaud you for sharing. Thank you for that. Because uh, yeah. I know a lot of people make it, it, you know, you almost feel the need to explain like, look, there's no problem in my marriage. But yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You know, we're going through this, this therapy, but it is, yeah. it's coaching. It's like anything. Yeah. We do it for performance. We do it for our health. We do it, you know, we, we get coached on everything, but this area yeah. tends, it seems to have a stigma around it because of just the, the industry is problem related, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny because I actually had a family member call, I don't know, a month ago or something. And they invited us to something and I said, Hey, I can't, we're actually going to counseling tonight. And he's like, Oh, is, is everything okay? okay? And I'm like, yeah, it's fine. It's all good. It's like, yeah, we're just, we're doing it. But I think that's the stigma. It's like, if you ever say, oh yeah, we're going to counseling people immediately are, oh, well, we'll, we'll pray for you. I'm right. Like, oh. Right. Right. Unless you're here. Right. That's yeah. what I love about go abundance. That's the part yeah. that people, I think that, that, that little nuanced, uh, uh, thing about being in a community like this, like we can have this discussion. Yeah. Right. This is, but, but I know people I've mentioned this to, and they, and I have to, not that I have to, but 
they, they, they are compelled to ask me seven different ways and like kind of yeah. look at me side-eyed when I mention this, like, what are you hiding? It's like nothing yeah. I'm being serious. Like this is what we're doing. I look at it like exactly. a physical, I look at it like then, you yeah. know, getting, going proactively to take care of the things that are most yeah. important to me. My marriage yeah. is one of those things. Right. So, yeah. yeah. And I think it's a great analogy, the dentist, the, 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 the health checkups, it's a, it's a great analogy. And I think honestly, people need to start thinking of it like that instead of, yeah, I got to go get my tooth pulled because I haven't done anything for 10 years. So, right. Right. Because what, yeah. what you find is when you go for the dentist trip, they find the problem before it's a problem. There's a problem. Yeah. There's something there. Yeah. Same thing. We're weeding the garden. Well, there's issues like we get like, what, what are you talking about? Like, how yeah. did, why did she just say this to me before? Like, you know, like yeah. the, the counselor kind of pulls it out, but yeah. it's, it's a, it's a light weed before it's overgrown with, yeah. uh, with, you know, stuff you don't want and you have to go back and whack it away. So exactly. Anyway. And that's the human. Element. We all have weeds. We all have weeds. We need to we'll pull up. So Yep, absolutely. Well, yeah. on that note, man, I've kept you longer than uh, than the hour. I apologize yeah. for that. But uh, where should people look you up, find you? Where do you want to direct folks so they can learn more about you and and uh, and the book that's coming out, Professional Failure? Yeah, yeah. I'll eventually. So I bought the domain. Um, we'll eventually have a website up. It'll just be professional failure.com for the book. And then um, I'm not too active on social media. I'm on Instagram. Uh, it's at Justin C. Skinner. So you can check in there. Um, but other than that, uh, I just need to do a better job at, you know, checking in on social media at some point, especially once the book gets rolling. So, um, but I appreciate you having me on Jamie and it's been fun. It's been a fun conversation. Absolutely. Thanks for being here. Appreciate you. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Let us know down in the comments and make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you can be informed on the next episode and other content right here on this channel. Thank you.